nice thing about the uh, BSI is it's actually got a little light and I've heard people say they don't know what that, what that light's for. I mean to me it's just as obvious as can be. If you've ever been underneath the dash, especially at night or in a dark shop and you're trying to hunt around for the uh, DLC connector, that's about as handy as it gets right there. You just turn the light on, bam, you can, you can find it. So I think that's a great idea. So we're going to go ahead and back out. Let me turn the ignition on here. We're going to go ahead and back out. Of this screen because we're not going to need to be here anymore. I was just kind of wanting to see how the uh, TPMS this is kind of neat whenever you actually shut whenever you disconnect the machine from the uh, VSI it gives you a reminder to make sure you unplug the VSI from the uh, from the car that way your customer doesn't drive off with your uh, you know with the VSI still stuck in this car so let's see we're gonna go right here diagnostics and right now it defaults it seems like to to all depending on the vehicle that I'm hooking this to I like to either go USA European Asian so I want to hit European and that just kind of you know breaks it down to oh, this this has only got three pages worth of European vehicles so and one thing that Autel needs to really do in my opinion make this to where the the uh, makes is in alphabetical order I mean why wouldn't you do that so here's BMW on the second page down at the bottom to me that don't make no sense but one thing you can do before I punch that, it does have a search up here. And if you start typing in that, let me show you. If you start typing, I'm just going to type BMW, or I'm going to type B. Everything with B pops up. And I'm going to type M. Now there's BMW right there. So that is that is one way you can, you know, pull it up automatic selection now I'm going to hit uh, read and hit ok to that it found the VIN just verifies that you know it does match what the what the car should be hit yes to that and we're just kind of I'm not really going to do anything other than show you what different functions this tool is capable of doing on a 2007 BMW 328i so we'll we'll let it communicate here and then uh, whenever it pops up we'll just kind of go through the some of the options sometimes it does take a while for it to finally see everything okay so um, and I haven't clicked on all these myself so let's see what vehicle profile is okay that's Kind of shows you what it showed us there at the start. Coding. Coding is basically if you change out a module, um, you can do that on this. But but this tool, you can change out virtually any module on this car, and this tool is able to uh, communicate and program it to where it will then work uh, you know in the car after, after you replace it um, my snap-on Varus in not in like that it doesn't have that capability on most things on this BMW um, so I think on some of these you, you do have to have the uh, uh, the J whatever it is 3425 uh, programming module on some things I know some things you don't um, but we'll go ahead and click around on some of this just to see what 
you know what some of these things say whenever I was looking for a scanner that was one of the one of the things I was trying to figure out as well what all can it do on you know for instance this is my, my wife's car I was curious to know you know will it do certain things or will it not do certain things on this car and, and I tried to find that information out and it, it, there really wasn't anything you know other than a couple little videos that I um, found you know it, it was tough to to uh, you know get anywhere hmm interesting I don't even know So pretty much, I mean, if you have a key fob you need to program, it looks like it can do it. I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, you know, everything works on this car, so I'm not going to risk uh, doing something that, you know, is going to going to jack something up. So I'm just kind of clicking on stuff so you can kind of see. Um, that was coding, so you can kind of see, you know, what, what this tool has on it. This is the software is BMW. It's it's 10.02. I do think there's a newer version. I think there's like 11 or, or something along those lines. So I don't know if it's added any functions or not. The nice thing I do like about it is uh, that that hot function. That's common stuff. You know, if you need to reset the oil light, register a battery, bleed the brakes. Um, there's the key option again. Exit out of that. Whoops. I want to stay on that kind of uh, window. You know, on these BMWs, you place a regulator. You've got to do a, a an initialization so it knows where full up is at for that anti-crush feature. Sunroof. I guess the sunroof is probably the same way. Seats, not sure what the deal is with the seats, but you got that option. Relearn throttle body, reset the steering axis in inclination or steering ac axis uh, angle or steering angle, rather. Oil reset, service maintenance. Uh, we'll just do powertrain, cast. Let's see what the cast. Cash reset, restart starter lock, reset starter lock, huh? Not sure what that is. Transmission. So this is basically just so that you can see, you know, what it is that that it can do. Some of this stuff I have no idea what it is. Uh, it does have a lot of, you know, obviously it's bi-directional. Um, you can do all kinds of bi-directional functional checks. Run fuel pump, run engine fan, all, just all kinds of stuff. Smooth running check. The uh, coolant pump, that's electric, you can run it to troubleshoot it. Something else you can do. Let me get completely out of this. I'm going to show you something that I thought was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Okay, we want to exit that. Let's get back to. 
Okay. Now, I'm gonna go back even farther. Oh, escape. Yes. Yeah, we're not gonna take that out. Okay, so let's say that you just booted it up, you're going in here, you don't even want to select a maker, a model, or anything. Right up in the upper corner, this little blue icon, it says VIN. You just click it. You do auto detect. And it'll sit there and scan, and you don't have to select BMW, you don't have to select Ford, you don't have to select anything. And it, it will attempt to ID the car. And so far, every car I've hooked it to, it's, it's ID'd every one of them. Um, so you do want to verify, you know, whenever it finally pops up, you want to at least make sure that it is, you know, at least the correct make and model. There's the VIN. I generally don't check it. Hit OK if it pops up and it says that it's a 2007 E90, then I trust that it's correct. So, I mean, to me, that's a pretty good feature. Um, you know, there's a lot of times that I've jumped in a vehicle, I'm just checking codes. I'm not even sure the exact year. Yeah, I might know it's a GM or a Ford or whatever, but I'm not sure what year it is. Well, my Varus, you've got to select the year and uh, I think the make, and then it'll start doing an auto ID for everything else. But on this, you can just sit there right from the start and, uh, you know, select auto ID. Not even select a European or an Asian or a domestic vehicle. You just you just do an auto ID and it'll it'll find it all. Um, and I can't remember what we've already clicked on. I think hot service is kind of nice. I think have we been there yet? Um, I can't remember if we've been there or not. I think we're on diagnosis. You can do auto scan. It'll scan everything. I guess we can let it do that. It doesn't take too long. And I do have a fault now on my instrument cluster, and I'll tell you why. Snap-on introduced BMW coding in their. 17.2 software for the Varus. So I thought, well, cool, that's going to be nice. So I come out here, I get it all hooked up. The one thing I thought would be kind of nice would be that it gives you, I'm going to come over here and show you. Right here on the center instrument, right there where that P is and the 18.6, when you can display the uh, live digital miles per hour on there, and that option is on that Varus. It's pretty straightforward. You just click active and OK. And it's supposed to rewrite the code to where now you got a digital speedometer. Well, it didn't work. And I didn't think a whole lot about it. Just figured, OK, well, I guess that Varus, you know, they got all the bugs worked out or whatever, which they obviously don't. And as far as everything that I can tell on the dash, everything works fine. Uh, I didn't see any change in anything at all. But where I didn't used to have a fault for the instrument cluster, I now have a fault. And it will not go away. I can't clear it. Um, so we'll read codes right here. We're going to read the specific code. Um, and all it says, combi internal coding data fault. Well, when I try to clear that, it, it, it immediately comes right back. So, you know, nothing I can do there. I, I'm going to hook the virus back up. I'm going to select uh, inactive, see if it'll rewrite the code, and see if that fault's still there. I don't know if it will. I'm not too worried about it. But it kind of makes you wonder, um, you know, because there's quite a bit of coding options 
in that Varus, and it makes you wonder what you know what else doesn't work. But anyway, that's uh, you know it, it goes through what I what I wish is that whenever you click you know let's say that for instance this is whenever you have that fault you can click on that and that it would show you the fault you know description and uh, uh, number you know right there but it doesn't now you can do a quick erase <clears throat> select you know what control unit you want to deal with new fuel pump So, I mean, it's got quite a bit, and it's got the built-in TPMS, which works really fine. I mean, honestly, I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of TPMS, but now, if I want to check the tire pressures, I don't even have to get my fingers dirty on the uh, valve stem caps. I can just walk around, hit it with this, and get instant, uh, you know, readings. I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's do something.